This is a really cool artist, Jacqueline James, Nashville local. So I'm just gonna spin this, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get through chorus one and then I'll start looking at the different elements that this session has and we'll go from there. So let's see what the elements are here. And for I will say, and we'll come back to this later, but the first thing that you want to do is listen to the rough mix, get an idea of what the artist and the producer have been listening to, try and catch maybe their intention, kind of the vibe of the song. And also what I like to do is look for little bits and pieces that you can use. Sometimes I'll hear a hook that only happens once later in the song, and the first thing I'll do is grab that and throw it at the top. You know, they might like it, they might hate it, that's cool, but I'm looking for hooks and I'm looking for things that grab you. The first thing I always do is just familiarize myself with just the vocalist. Now I know Jacqueline, so I have an idea of how she sings and the, and, um, the way she wants stuff, but it's always a good idea to listen to the vocal and just kind of get an idea of how that's going to sit, whether it's well recorded, whether it's poorly recorded, like if there's anything you need to do to make that great. It, you're going to change it when it gets into context, but everything revolves around the vocal. The raw vocal is up here, and one of the things that I did was take it and run it out through a number of compressors. Uh, what I like to do uh, is use compressors as kind of color boxes. So I ran it through a couple compressors and did a little mix and match until I got something that I liked, and then I printed it back into the box. And you'll notice, as you look at all of these plugins, um, you know, there's there's even more processing going on um, after the fact. So it's not like running it through a bunch of vintage compressors does anything magic that you can't get in the box, and it's not like you don't need to touch it. I mean, it's whatever works is what works. So the first thing I'll do is listen to the overheads and get the picture of the drum kit. Um, and then the next thing I will do is go up here to the kick drum and make sure that everything's in phase. Because you can take this thing right here, and hopefully you'll hear this. Throw it out of phase, and now all of your lowing goes away, right? I think it's crucial to check phase polarity um, on all of your drum mics. Hopefully, uh, they were cut well, and um, you know, you don't have to change much of anything, but you always gotta check them. I'll listen to the drums as a whole. I'll use samples to augment. So if we take the snare samples out, snare's still hitting. Kick drum, I usually use some samples to pull in some. Okay, on this one, it's pulling in a lot. Like, it's adding low end and adding a little bit of attack. So let's see what I'm doing here, okay? CLA, I don't know if anybody's heard of that guy. He mixes stuff. Um, uh, and this is a Steven Slate kick sample. So there you go. Um, two guys from Jersey. Uh, so I'm using this to fill in some thickness and this to add some of that live stuff. Not very loud, but it does make a difference. And so the kick out, I'm taking off low and high and I'm gating a little bit just to keep the bleed to a minimum. And then drum leveler. This is a cool plug-in. It kind of functions as a dynamic gate and also a compressor. And then I'll throw in uh, some API EQ. As you can see, again, like extreme settings sometimes work really well. I had a little bit of extra EQ just taking out some of the bottom that I was putting back in with the API. And then the L Ray, which is a really cool kick drum compressor. Um, hitting it pretty hard, but then only blending it in about 50-50. So. We're kicking the samples. What I'll do is actually start with a section in the chorus that is pretty loud. Um, because this is where you're gonna want your impact. Um, and in this song, since it, it really just starts on the first chorus, we could start there too. You want that chorus to hit. So let's just start at the place where it's happening. So these are the drums. Now we just start looking through other stuff. This thing is a sample. Totally, you know, 
Reznor would be proud of that one, I think. Um, I'm sure that's something that, that uh, Jacqueline produced. And I think when I was doing this, my first instinct on this was to treat it weirdly, like with this stuff. And obviously she didn't like that. And they were used to that one, a little bit lower, a little bit ed less edgy. So that's cool, we'll add that in. So I'm gonna go through and just check out all these instruments and see what the deal is, so. Okay, synth bass for the verses. Chorus synth bass, which I kind of screwed up a little bit. Gave it a little bit of distortion, took some high and low off of it, and then I'm doing a little bit of a stereo spread to get it out of the center, right? Because I know by looking down, we've got an actual bass in the center. This is also printed. So let's take a look at all the garbage I got on that. Cool, they cut three, di four different bass channels. Clean one dirty one that I didn't bother using until later. Cab with a little bit of grind. Sub kick, which is kind of a cool thing to put on a bass cabinet. Um, and then I am, I'm doing all kinds of crazy stuff to it. So the bass came in like this and it'll be low. So the first thing I did was I've got a bass channel on my console. I got a bass channel on my console that gives it a little EQ and compression. It's not doing a ton. Almost always the Sans amp gets add, ended up adding to the bass. And then I'm adding a little bit of a little bit of distortion with vintage warmer. This is a really cool trick. This thing, uh, the waves oral exciter um, for whatever reason, really makes bass sound cool, I think. Here it is without it. I like what it does to bring up the high end and the pick, but I also like the way it brings out the, the lower level. So usually when there's a ton of keyboards, I'll try and identify stuff that I can help move out of the middle. Because if you have everything stuck in the middle and you have drums and bass and guitar, and then all of these keyboards, you're not gonna hear them. Um, it is not beneficial or necessary to have like, oh, this is the highest five piano sound that I can have and try and jam it in there. So I'm noticing as I do this, that like this piano, I used a little Haas effect preset that I have that moves it from whatever the normal piano sound was to really wide and a little bit out of, you know, out of phase on one end. So, um, you know, we might get busted by our, uh, our recording school teachers um, if they found out that I did this, but what it does is it moves it outside of the speakers somewhat, or it moves it away from the middle and away from the vocal. So you can still hear it without having to crank it and without things getting muddy. And then as I look through all of these synths, I notice that I'm doing that a lot. I'm doing that on this one too. Um, doing it on this one. Again, trying just trying to find ways to keep space. Oh yeah, I remember that. This one I'm actually kind of screwing up so we can hear it. We'll come back to these later because out of context, this doesn't really mean anything. I wouldn't be necessarily EQing these yet um, until I know what they need, but you have to know what's there. So when you listen to the rough mix and you listen to just the whole thing, you'll notice that that sound, and it looks like this one too. Um, this sound was an important sound in the song. It's kind of a point in the chorus um, that kind of sets it off. It has to cut through a ton of guitars, right? So identifying that as something that's gonna stand out, the, that thing, 
Um, it's like, okay, so I'm probably going to, after I get drums and bass kind of ballpark, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mess with that and see if I can make it stand out. So as you can see, like, what I ended up doing, here's, a, here's the original, which is cool, but it's not going to stand out. So then I gave it some distortion and spread it outside the speakers. Um, and then I also duplicated it down here. Gave it a high octave with little altar boy and then just got rid of all the low stuff because all I wanted was the brightness on it. More outside of the speakers, again, some more distortion, a little bit of reverb, and then that makes, uh, it's kind of fun. That makes this, this sound into this sound is going to cut through a lot better. You find more if I were mixing this for real, I would spend so a good amount of time trying to find the best character for her vocal. Fall at the altar. You find more like this, it seems this purple so 1176 seems to give a little more character and than this 176. But you find more than it seems so wide. Again, it's totally singer dependent. You find more than it seems so wide. Run and fall at the altar. I gotta be honest. You find this plugin, DSM V3. It seems so wide. No idea how to use it. None. I pulled it up by and accident on a vocal. At the altar. This is God's you honest truth. I pulled it by up by accident on the vocal. And I turned so it on and it sounded run. awesome and I've been using it. Um, and it's just and fall at the altar. You find more than it seems so why run. It's really cool. It adds a little spice to the vocal. Um, I just discovered it recently. At some point, I will go and dig into the manual and find out how it works. But this is actually a really good example of uh, if it sounds good, it is good. Who cares if you're using it correctly, right? This applies to everything. Turn the knobs all the way to the right. But not for reasons of love or fame. What did you go? I don't know if you noticed, but you know, you put the vocal in, then all of a sudden, now the drums sound dull, now the cymbals are too low. I hear the world screaming out your it really does adjust your perspective really quickly. But not for reasons of love or with the room mics up. I forget where we had it. At some point we'll talk about the two bus. Hello, backgrounds. I hear the world screaming out 
out your name But not the reasons of love or fame I don't remember what I did with this. So, I mean, this is the process is get things roughed in as quickly as possible. I'd be tr checking the rough mix and trying to level match it. But not the reasons of love or fame. 